Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And in this video, I'm going to talk about combining fundamental and technical demand and supply. And many retail traders really don't uh, apply fundamental analysis um, to their trading uh, for various reasons. There's a bit of a stigma about fundamental analysis, um, which I think is, uh, is put out there. Plus, people tend to... Um, I guess move towards the path of least resistance, right? Which basically just means that technicals um, is a lot easier, right? It's the path of least resistance. It's the easier way. Whereas, you know, at the beginning of learning fundamental analysis, it can be um, quite difficult. There's a learning curve there. But once you actually understand what's going on and how the pieces tend to move, then it does become a, a lot easier. Just like riding a bike, right? Or any, any skill. Anyways. Combining fundamental and technical demand and supply um, really, I think, is imperative for your, you know, trading success. And it's because if you, you know, if the two aren't aligned, there's no um, technical level that's really going to work, right? Technical demand or technical supply is just not going to work without the combination of fundamental demand in alignment, right, or supply. So we're on natural gas, and fundamentally. Um, in November, November the 16th, um, this was a Bloomberg article, markets uh, were saying that well, warm start to winter leaves more gas for next year, Goldman says. Europe will end winter with better than expected gas storage. Uh, weak Chinese LNG demand also means more supply for Europe, so more supply. Now, commodities are driven by supply and demand, the supply and demand dynamic, right? The more demand you have, prices go higher. The more supply you have, the prices go lower. And so <clears throat> with warmer weather um, comes less demand, right? And probably more supply, which is basically what, you know, this subheading was saying. And um, and so, you know, the, the, the issue was that the exceptionally mild weather experienced in the northwest of Europe since October has led to a sharp drop in gas prices sooner than Goldman uh, expected, uh, the analyst said. And so with, you know, warm weather affecting the supply and demand dynamic, right, prices, right, the demand for prices was, wasn't really there. There was a lot more uh, supply. And um, and so, you know, that was really a kind of early, you know, signal if you were trading natural gas fundamentally to, you know, to, to kind of watch. Right. And so um, we also had, um, you know, in, in January, right, January the 3rd, that actually was confirmed because obviously the weather, nobody can really predict the weather. But it did turn out that we did have overall warmer weather in the end. Right. And so natural gas prices are plunging on a warmer start to the winter, right? So milder weather seen from Europe to China over the next few weeks, gas rationing unlikely as top importers have built stockpiles. So again, they'd already built their stockpiles, so there was probably a lot of supply in the market, yeah, more supply than demand because they built their stockpiles, right? And so when you actually then start to go forward and you know realize that, um, uh, there was probably more supply, fundamental supply than demand. As I said before, there's no technical analysis level that's really going to stand in the way of fundamental uh, supply and demand, right? And so you've got varying levels of demand, right? Varying levels of what traders would, you know, draw in demand, right? So you've got demand in and around that zone here. You've got demand going way back to June 21. Demand zone there, demand zone there, demand zone there, right? Now, it doesn't necessarily matter exactly how you draw it, right? But there is demand in and around these areas here. However you draw, you know, technical demand or technical supply. But in this case, it would be technical demand. And so with fundamental demand not aligning with technical demand, Trying to pick lows, right? Trying to pick the turning points, because that's pretty much what traders attempt to do, yeah, is practically, in, not I wouldn't say impossible, right? You might do it by luck, but it's really not going to work out in your favor in terms of the probabilities, right? And you can see, you know, what happens. Now, there does come a point, and there always will come a point, where um, 
liquidity needs to be sought, right? In terms of there's a buildup of liquidity above the market. And if there's not enough sellers to push price, you know, down in terms of sell orders and liquidity, then the market must look for sell orders above the market, meaning, <clears throat> you know, that, um, you know, you get, that uh, was why you get like, you know, short squeezes, right? They do tend to happen. And there was a period where you did get some moves to the upside, right? And it did bounce off of actually the lower end of that demand zone, which was all the way back um, in October, 2020. But who would have known that, right? In real time, you would have been, you know, taking loss after loss after loss after loss had you had been trying to time these demand zones, not aligning that the fundamentals are not aligned with that, you know, with the technicals, right? And so you do get finally a bit of a move higher, what I tend to refer as, you know, proof of value, yeah? But then, and I just wanna just delete, you know, these, uh, these uh, demand zones off the chart, right? Delete these demand zones off the chart. So, you do get an area where there is now proof of value, right? Proof of value meaning that the price has proved that there is, you know, potential demand here. Now, when prices do come back to this area here, the question then becomes is why is natural gas, even though it was a bargain right here, there was definitely buyers getting involved in that area, right? Or less sellers getting involved in that area. Why is this, if prices do pull back to this area, why is this price likely to be a bargain, right? So has the fundamentals changed to the point where value, right? This becomes value, so price and value are two different things. Uh, price isn't always reflective of value and value doesn't always reflect uh, price or current price. That's why things are undervalued or expensive, right? Or cheaper or bargain price or expensive. Now the question for traders would be, is that a bargain price? Yeah. Now again, if you don't understand fundamental analysis and why, you know, um, natural gas may not have been a bargain at that price, then you're likely being caught, um, being caught out again at that level, right? So timing this was very difficult, right? You would have had to have gone through maybe about maybe seven, eight demand zones before you actually ended up maybe making some money on that if you managed to pick that low, and then when prices come back. Again, the question becomes, is that a you know bargain? And obviously the market doesn't think so, right? There's no demand there. There's no fundamental demand for natural gas. And so if you do want to improve your, you know, your win rates, your, you know, just even the, the, the assets that you actually trade and understanding the assets that you trade, it is imperative that you understand fundamental demand, right? On a larger scale, fundamental demand, fundamental supply, why there's likely to be more demand and supply or supply than demand, understand the, the dynamics of the asset that you're trading and not just look towards, um, you know, the technicals in order to determine your directional bias. Um, all right, take care guys and speak to you all soon.